Usually, when I'm looking through the lineup for a new season of anime, I decide which shows to watch by checking the synopsis, studio, and staff. Sometimes I'll just think, hey, that animation style looks interesting, maybe I'll watch an episode. But this season, there was one show I decided to watch just based on the title alone. I didn't read the synopsis, look at the staff list, nothing. I was so excited by that title that I wanted to go into the series as blind as possible. And thankfully, so far this series has not disappointed. Now let me explain a little bit why I was so excited, as you're probably aware if you've read or watched Banana Fish. The title is an homage to a short story by J.D. Salinger entitled A Perfect Day for Banana Fish. And when you have a name like Caulfield, it's kind of required by law to read all of Salinger's works. Not only is the story referenced in the first episode of the anime, but that episode is even titled A Perfect Day for Banana Fish. So today, I wanted to talk about the short story that prompted me to watch this show, the parallels that can be drawn between the two, and what that might mean for the future of the anime. Right off the bat, let's get one thing straight. I have not read the Banana Fish manga, nor do I know how the story ends. This video is merely a theoretical speculation. If you spoil the story in the comments, I will be very sad. For those of you who haven't read this story, I'll leave a link to it in the description, so feel free to read it now and come back when you're done. In summary, A Perfect Day for Banana Fish is a story about Seymour Glass. After returning from World War II, Seymour is mentally unstable and seemingly incapable of functioning normally in society. His wife, Muriel, dismisses the issue, insisting he's fine so she doesn't have to deal with the matter. The main scene of the tale involves Seymour chatting with a four-year-old girl named Sybil. The two go out and play in the ocean, and it's here that Seymour explains just what a banana fish is. Quote, Well, they swim into a hole where there's a lot of bananas. They're very ordinary-looking fish when they swim in. But once they get in, they behave like pigs. Why, I've known some banana fish to swim into a banana hole and eat as many as 78 bananas. Naturally, after that, they're so fat they can't get out of the hole again. Can't fit through the door. What happens to them? Sybil asks. Well, I hate to tell you, Sybil. They die. Unquote. After this, Sybil claims to have spotted a banana fish, one with six bananas in its mouth. In reaction, Seymour kisses the young girl's foot, leaves the beach, goes back to his hotel room where his wife is dozing, and shoots himself in the head. So let's unpack that, shall we? First off, what's with the banana fish metaphor? What does that symbolize? Well, the banana fish symbolize the soldiers who were sent away to war. They're just like ordinary people when they go in, but they gorge themselves on violence and suffering till they're unable to return to the world they once inhabited. So how does this relate to the banana fish anime? The obvious connection you could draw here is between Seymour and Griffin, Ash's brother who returned from the Vietnam War. At the time I'm writing this video, we're only four episodes into the series, so we don't know what caused Griffin to snap while he was overseas. All we know is that it had something to do with a person referred to as banana fish as well as some mysterious drug. But Griffin isn't the character I want to focus on today. From a narrative standpoint, he only matters in how he affects Ash. No, the character that is written to parallel Seymour is our protagonist, Ash Lynx. And the more you look at it, the more the two have in common. Ash has suffered terribly throughout his life, presumably losing his parents at a young age, seeing as they're never present, being kidnapped as a sex slave at the age of 10, becoming a gang boss at the age of 17, he's seen his fair share of violence and trauma. As for Seymour, we already know he was a soldier, but using some clues hidden in the text, we can glean a lot more than that. From the book of poetry he gave his wife and the model of the gun in his suitcase, we can deduce that he was serving in Germany. And when Muriel's mother asks her why Seymour always wears a bathrobe when he's down at the beach, she replies with, he says he doesn't want a lot of fools looking at his tattoo. This comment and Muriel's evasion of the questions that follow indicate that Seymour was captured by the Germans during his service. And as I'm sure you know, the Nazis would brand political prisoners and those they deemed lesser with serial numbers and throw them in concentration camps. So the tattoo that Seymour is so adamant about hiding is likely those numbers on his arm. But the fact that they both suffered isn't enough to justify a connection between the two characters. To do that, we need to look at how Ash interacts with Eiji. When the two meet for the first time, one of the most important events is when Ash lets Eiji touch his gun. We learn afterwards that Ash doesn't let anybody do that. He even blew Arthur's fingers off for attempting it. So why, after just meeting this young man, did Ash take a liking to him? Well, because of his innocence. Eiji is so naive, so blissfully ignorant to the horrors of the world. He's never had to kill someone or been corrupted by a society of violence, at least that we know of. When our characters are cornered at the end of episode 2, A.G. is able to escape by pole vaulting over the wall. As Ash puts it, he's able to fly. And that expression isn't just literal. A.G. is able to escape from the horrors he's seen. He's able to fly away, while Ash cannot. He's seen too much, he's done too much, he's eaten too many bananas, and now he's stuck in the hole. And that's why he takes a liking to Eiji. He wants to connect to innocence and childlike incorruptibility. 
maybe the same reason that he was always hanging around Skip. Ash and Aegis' relationship is a direct parallel between Seymour and Sybil's. Seymour sees in Sybil what he no longer has, that childlike innocence. When the two go for a swim, he takes off his robe, something he won't do in front of anyone else. He puts himself in a vulnerable position with her, just like Ash did when he allowed Eiji to hold his gun. The writer of this story didn't decide to call it Banana Fish on some whim, that was an intentional decision. So we can use these parallels between the main characters to learn more about the story to come. We can look at what happens to Seymour and make predictions about Ash, and we can look at what happens to Sybil and make predictions about Eiji. Let's start by looking at the character we know less about, Eiji. He's a 19-year-old photographer from Japan who has, as far as we can tell, led a very normal life. Like Sybil, he seems to be an embodiment of childlike innocence. However, Sybil is not as pure as Seymour may like to think. Even though she's just a child, she shows that she's capable of negative emotions like jealousy and that she has no problem lying. This would seem to indicate that the innocence Seymour is clinging to is just a fantasy. If we look at this in the context of Banana Fish, we could take it to mean that Eiji isn't as pure and innocent as he seems either. He could have some sort of tragic past or a negative side we just haven't seen yet. All we know right now, though, is how much Ash cares for Eiji. Just like Seymour clung to Sybil to keep himself sane, so too will Ash cling to Eiji as the series progresses. Even when the rest of the world rejected and looked down on him for what he was, Sybil, possessing the unbiased eyes of a child, still viewed Seymour as a good man. So even if Ash loses everything, we know Eiji will still be there for him. When Seymour comes back from war, he can't adjust back into society. He's seen the evils men are capable of, and he's done things no human should ever have to do. And he can't function in a world where those around him don't understand that, so he removes himself from that world. Ash has been through hell and back. He's seen people he cared for murdered in front of him. He's suffered in a way no 17-year-old ever should. So when the story draws to a close, if he's able to solve the mystery of Banana Fish and escape the clutches of Dino, he probably won't be able to return to a normal life. Like Seymour, he may end up killing himself. But not just for himself. He'll do it to protect Eiji. Let's go back to Seymour's final scene with Sybil. Because kissing a child's feet is a pretty creepy thing to do. Well, that is if you weren't raised Catholic and never read the Bible. This act is a symbolic reference to biblical foot washing. There's a scene in the Bible where a sinning woman washes Jesus' feet with her tears in order to gain forgiveness. A more well-known example would be Jesus washing the feet of the disciples on the night of the Last Supper. So Seymour isn't kissing Sybil's foot in some sort of weird sexual gesture. He's doing it because she is innocent and he is not. He's doing it to ask for absolution, to apologize for the sins he's committed overseas and for exposing her to the harsh realities of the world through the banana fish. But if we think about it through the lens of the latter example, of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, then Seymour as a character becomes a martyr. He's sacrificing himself so that Sybil can lead a more full life, one without him in it. So if Ash is to end his own life, I think he'd be doing it to protect Eiji. To make sure Eiji didn't have the same life he did. Because it's too late for Ash. He's trapped in the banana hole. But Eiji? Eiji can still fly. So, what do you think? How do you think Banana Fish is gonna end? How do you interpret Salinger's short story? Remember that everything in this video is just a theory based on the short story. I probably should have waited until the series ran its course to make this video, but I was really excited to talk about it. Thank you to all these wonderful people over on Patreon for making this video possible. If you've read the manga, please don't spoil anything down in the comments. And I'll see you guys next video. Goodbye!